Check one. Oh, excellent. I wasn't trying to be. Yep. I didn't even know you were in the room. Yep, I saw some people coming up in there. I didn't even know there was a bunch of that. Some stuff underneath that was hiding stuff like water and plastic. And I, 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 I was just trying to get up there and check out. No.
check. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, we're just about uh, three minutes away from the Providence group being here as we begin our series of four press conferences today. If you're over on the uh, other side, we invite you to make your way over. Sorry about that. All right, ladies and gentlemen, uh, good afternoon. Welcome to the uh, 68th Annual NCAA Division I Men's Ice Hockey Championship and its culmination here in Boston uh, this weekend, the Frozen Four. Pleased to have the Providence contingent uh, with us. Of course, we know Providence will face off against Omaha tomorrow. Here, 507 drop of the puck. Second game will begin at 837 or 53 minutes after the first game ends if we happen to have all overtimes and multiple overtimes which interfere with that uh, start time. We'll begin uh, just with some opening thoughts uh, from Coach Lehman and the uh, players on obviously not too far to come, but uh, welcome to Providence. Nate, uh, how are things going? Welcome to Boston. Or, yeah, welcome to Boston. <laughs> welcome Providence. Yeah, keep good it, point. Keep sharp, Fish. Um, <laughs> Obviously, uh, it was a, a tough weekend two weekends ago. It was hard fought. Uh, you know, we beat two very good teams to get here, so we're very proud to get here. And um, we gave the guys off uh, two or three days, uh, had a nice Easter break, and uh, we're itching to play again. So we know we're going to be facing a very good Omaha team, and, um, you know, we're looking forward to playing the game tomorrow afternoon. Noel, what's happening over there? Nothing much. No? You excited no. to be here? Very excited. I think we all are. And uh, how, what do you consider your chances? I mean, getting here, anyone could beat anyone, so it's anyone's game, but we've worked hard to get here, and uh, we're, I think we're ready. John, thoughts? Um, yeah, happy to be here. Obviously, we're very fortunate to beat uh, two very good teams a couple weeks ago, like Coach said, and uh, yeah, excited to have a one in four chance to win. Ross. Um, no, it's right now. It's just kind of focus on tomorrow, getting the, off to a good start. Uh, been a pretty um, humble year so far, and we're just trying to end on the right note. Uh, we got a whole room of guys that believe in each other, and uh, that's all that really matters. Is when we go on the ice, 
everyone's playing for each other and and uh, we're, we're competing for the same thing. So. Outstanding. Well, we have the uh, Pat and Chris with the mics, and we'll utilize this format uh, all the way through. So each time you ask a question, we ask you to identify yourself and your affiliation, not only so folks up here know who they're talking to, but uh, all these press conferences are being transcribed, and so our transcribers uh, that are listening know who is speaking. So we'll start uh, with your question. Just raise your hand. We'll identify you, and uh, we'll keep this light and fun. Right here, sir. Yep. Uh, Nick Rojas, Providence College. Uh, this question is for Ross and Noel. Uh, how do you go about telling the younger guys in the room to appreciate this trip to the Frozen Four, but also realize to take it seriously? that it is a business trip. Ross. I think for all of us, it's new, but I think for the older guys, uh, um, especially for us, just to enjoy this moment. Uh, it's been a long year to get to this point, and uh, four years of hard work, really, um, to get to this point. So, I mean, we got a good veteran group. I think we can lean on those guys and, and myself and Noel to kind of lead the way and uh, just uh, make sure we leave it all out there on tomorrow night uh, and leave no, no regrets. No. Um, basically, just kind of piggyback off that. We also want to let them know, focus any other weekend. I mean, two games wins you a championship, but we're focused on Thursday, drop the puck, and uh, that's all we're really focused on right now. If you haven't already, if you wouldn't uh, mind silencing your cell phones, pagers, Bob Snow is here. Bob, good to see you. How are you? Welcome. Further questions? Right here in the front. Scott McLaughlin, WEI. Uh, John, if you could flash back three years to when you kind of had pick of a few really good programs you could have picked from. Uh, Coach Lehman had been in Providence for one year at that point. What was it that sold you on, on him and on the Providence program? Uh, I think I think confidence is a big part of it, and Coach Lehman's confidence in where this program was headed was really evident when my family and I sat down with him. and. Uh, Obviously, the campus of Providence is beautiful, and uh, the support staff that helps us be on the ice is uh, second to none as well. So there are a lot of factors that went into it from that standpoint. And um, But Coach Lehman's definitely his intensity and his attention to detail and all those things that everyone already knows um, just came to the forefront, and uh, I couldn't be happier with my decision. Other questions right here front? Uh, Brian Sullivan, U.S. College Hockey Online. This is also a question for John. Uh, as one of the three Calgary Flames prospects in the system, does that uh, you know lend itself to any um, you know joking around in the locker room? You guys always watching the team, uh, you know, at the NHL level or anything else like that? Uh, yeah, Mark, John, and I have we've come obviously pretty close, going through development camp and different things like that. And uh, it's obviously it's awesome to see the Flames making a push for the playoffs here and uh, really pulling for them. But uh, <laughs> As for that stuff, I mean, it, it's nice uh, being on a team when you get to go through some of the stuff together, different meetings, stuff like that together. So it's been a fun ride with those two, and um, hopefully we can keep it going. Right here, Julie. Julie Robenheimer, HockeyBuzz.com. Noel, this question is for you. Uh, your offensive production, both personally and as a team, has seemed to have exploded in the second half of the season. Anything you, you can attribute that to? Um, I think we just uh, stuck to the process. We went through a little rough patch with scoring as a team, but uh, I think we just stuck with the process, and we knew that the goals would come. It was just a matter of time, and they're coming at the right time of the season right now. Sir. Dan Rubin from U.S. College Hockey Online. Uh, this question is for Coach uh, Lehman. Uh, the, the Frozen Four kind of takes on a, an East-West feel uh, with both semifinals, where you have a Hockey East team against a team from the National Conference. Uh, what are your observations in terms of the way the, the college hockey's realignment has kind of grown the game, and uh, in terms of the east-west feel of the of the Frozen Four? Uh, what are your thoughts on that? I love the east-west feel of the Frozen Four. I love the that's one thing that's special about the tournament is when you get to play uh, teams that you don't see uh, all year, um, teams that you you know you're kind of following the progress or reading or maybe catch. Uh, you know, on an off night when you're not playing, you catch them on TV a little bit, but it helps you learn about those teams. It helps you respect those coaches a heck of a lot more because you see the jobs that they're doing. Um, I, I love I love the field. I think it, that's what makes it a national tournament. Um, I'm sorry, I, I'm trying to remember the, the first part of your question, Dan. Uh, in terms of uh, realignment and the growth of the game and all the stuff going on, how, how has that helped the Frozen 
Well, I think I think it's I think it's made it a lot tougher to make the tournament. You know, being at a school like Providence, I think it's made it tougher to make the tournament. Um, you know, usually, you know, it used to be kind of the magic number twenty wins. You you could pretty much punch your ticket to the tournament. And you know, we were sitting at twenty two and on the bubble. Bowling Green was sitting at twenty two and on the bubble. Um, you know, so I think the realignment has changed hockey quite a bit. I think it's changed. Uh, you know, I think it, you know I think it's tougher to get in the tournament because. Um, more non-traditional teams might get in, you know, so to speak. Um, but, uh, yeah. Okay, in the back there, Neil. Yes, uh, Neil Kepke, MSUSpartans.com. This is for John. John, could you go back last year and, and uh, what went through your mind when you were thinking of turning pro or had the opportunity and you decided to come back to Providence? Uh, a, a few things, but pretty much where, where we're sitting right now. And uh, the prospect, I mean, I knew that um, the team we had in our locker room and the type of character players on and off the ice that I would have the privilege of playing with once again. So it was, um, it was a couple day process, but at the end of the day, uh, the reason you come back to college hockey is to be a, be a part of something like this and have a chance to compete for a national championship. So it's been fun. Thank you, Neil. By the way, Neil Kepkin is 37th year covering the Frozen Four. That's a long time, Neil. Most of us weren't born in here then. Jim? Thank you, Jim Conley from U.S. College Hockey Online. Nate, uh, when you look at what you've been able to do with the Providence program, what you did in taking the step forward with the Union, I know you weren't there when they won the title, but what, what is goes into the blueprint to create these programs that can compete for national championships? Well, I think it's a it's a misconception to think that you're going to hire a head coach and he's just going to change things and he's just going to do it by himself. I think that's the that's the number one misconception is that one guy does it. It's not one guy. It's it's um, it's about getting your alumni on board. It's about uh, your administration. You have to have great administrators above you that ha that share the same vision that you do, um, and you have to you have to have administrations that may want change. You know that's that's not always easy um, sometimes, but. Um, and then first, you know, and the big part is you got to get great players. You know, I mean, uh, been fortunate um, at Union and at Providence to to coach some phenomenal players, um, and you know, I, I think that's that's what changes programs is is the players. Okay, go ahead back here. Jessica Gaine, WCSH6 in Portland, Maine. This question is for John and for Coach. John, how have you seen yourself progress throughout this season with this team? And Coach, what are some of the, the progressions you've seen in John as well? John? Yeah, I mean, uh, coming into the season, it was, it was more uh, at this stage of any goalie's career. It's not any big changes, any big overhauls. It's, it's focusing and being uh, consistent with the little details in your game. And so... That's what that's what I was trying to do um, from from the beginning, and make sure detailed every day in practice and with different little things, and hopefully have that translate into games and now translate to success. So uh, it, it's been good that way, and I've also had a uh, team play phenomenal in front of me and stuff like that. So it's all we've all come together, and hopefully we can make a good run here. Nate, well, I, I would say over the three years, there's been a lot of growth in John's game. Um, I think the way he just answered that question would probably be the, the most important growth in his game is that he understands um, the details within his game and he understands uh, what it takes to be consistently great at this level. Um, John's played in a lot of big games. Um, you know, first when he came to us, he, he played in some big games his freshman year, competing for the league uh, championship and then getting into the league semifinals. Um, and he was fortunate enough to be on the world junior teams and playing some some very big games there. Um, and then last year, I thought it was um, he went through a, a little bit of a rough patch in the second half, and I thought it was a really healthy thing for him to go through um, a little adversity. And our team was going through some adversity. Uh, we we battled through it. John battled through it, and I thought it was amazing growth in his game. And I think this year he hasn't hit any rough patches. He's been very consistent. He understands the uh, how hard you have to practice. He understands the details that matter in his game. And um, I think it's a big reason why there's only one time this year we've lost back-to-back -back games. And that was that was early, uh, very early in the season. So, um, you know, that's what I would say all that's a big part of his growth. I think he's gotten better every year. By the way, if you don't know Dan Colloran, who 
heads up media relations for Providence. He's right here. I imagine most of you know him by now. Further questions? Right over here. Right here. Hi, Ross. Rich Thompson, Boston Herald. Uh, what's been the secret of your longevity there? 154 straight games. Who, that's, this is, uh, who are you going for? Russ. Russ, okay. Russ, just want to make sure the, they're listening. They get it. Uh, I mean, from day one, I was given a pretty good opportunity from, from coach to play right away and um, just tried to make the most of it. And uh, each day, just trying to bring it in practice and making sure doing the right things off the ice to stay healthy. And um, I don't know, it's been, it's been an amazing journey and we're just trying to end up on the right note. But uh, I had a guy, Derek Army, who I ended up passing in the, in the streak or whatever, but um, he was another guy I looked up to right early on, a guy I did it the right way and kind of kind of led by example. And so that's a guy I looked up to for sure. Um, but uh, it's been a great four years and just trying to end on the right note. Okay, right here. Mark Diver from the Providence Journal. For uh, all of the players, what did it mean to you guys to see your friend Drew Brown out there on the ice at the end of practice? Russ? That was a special moment. Uh, he's been through a lot this year, and just to have him back around the rink in the dorm, just hanging out with us, um, it's kind of you know back to normal for us. Uh, it's It was awesome to have him put the skates on and, and just kind of get out there, and uh, uh, it just really gives us another another thing to look up, look towards to, to see how much he's he's battled through this, and, and we can kind of lean on that to, to as motivation as well. John? You know, I don't think you can really put into words something like that because you know it's it's behind the scenes all the work that he's done just to get back up on his feet, especially after the surgery. And I mean, Drew Brown's the guy that you never heard him complain once throughout anything, and you never heard him pity himself, anything like that. And so, it's it's very special to have him here and for him to be able to be back on the ice in a place where he feels very at home after the journey that he's gone through and every different thing operation he's gone through and stuff like that. It's. Uh, it's definitely special, and I don't think anyone can adequately ad adequately describe it. Noel. Yeah, <coughs> yeah. just to piggyback off them, uh, I mean, it's a great feeling having him back. It's like back to normal. He's around the locker room with all the guys. He's just, I think he just enjoys having the company of the team, and we love having him with us. It's been a pleasure with him every, come, every time he comes to a game. He's been out to, I think, about five games, and... I'm glad that we can make it here for him. He fought to be here, and we fought for him to stay in this team as long as he can. And I mean, it's a great feeling to have him here, and we're hoping we can pull a couple more wins. OK, Bob. Yeah, Ross. Yeah, Ross. Uh, uh, can Bob's you identify? Yeah, yeah bobstonehl.com and bruinsdaily.com. Now, you've had the longest vision, if you will, of where you guys have come to get to this point. You look back, if you will, at two years ago when Yale was kind of in your shoes and the bubble factor that they were on and now you guys are kind of on the bubble getting to the tournament as a motivation to what can happen for Saturday night? Yeah, I think, I mean, it's been a, a long journey because even each year we, we come into it uh, with the goal to win a national championship. And I mean, every year you, you're building and building and trying to get better. And I think this is definitely the best team I've been on with the depth we've had. I mean, we have uh, four lines, each line go out there and score a goal. And uh, I think that really adds to our success. And then with John in the, in the back end too. So, I mean, um, for us, we just got to focus on playing our game and taking it one game at a time and um, go from there. I mean, it's it's going gonna, it's gonna to be a hard, hard fought game tomorrow night and we just got to make sure we're ready to go from the start. Interestingly enough, we uh, know we've had the seeding process since uh, 2003 and uh, eight number four seeds have made it to the uh, Frozen Four. All eight of them have come since uh, 2008. Right over here. Jeff Cox, SB Nation. John, for you, uh, you know, you really seem to be right in the game and sharp right off the bat in the East Regional Final. What what kind of things do you look for to get, you know, kind of into the game right away and try to, you know, do to make sure your, you know, intensity level's up there from, from the get-go? Uh, I think one of the big things in a game like that is to not overemphasize it in your mind or anything like Not treat it like more than it is. Uh, it's, it's the same game of hockey, and you got to remember to have fun with it. you got to just prepare the same way. Uh, not and not do too much not try to do too much just stick to what makes you successful and what what's made you successful all season so um, th that was one part of it and I think I 
think we came out strong from the beginning and got our guys had a lot of jump and stuff like that too. So it makes it easy when the first shots um, you're seeing are from from farther away or from outside or something like that to get a feel for the puck and get into it. Okay, right here, and then we'll come up to the front here. Uh, Brian, Brian Sullivan, U.S. College Hockey Online. Uh, coach, uh, question for Coach: um, Is there anything looking back on on your NCAA experience that uh, at Union that you wish you had done differently, or from last year even that you wish you had done differently, uh, as far as the routine scheduling and how you set your your team up for uh, NCAA success? Well, both times we lost to the national champion. Um, you know, my my last year at Union, we lost to Duluth. They went on and won the national championship, and it was it was a tight game. Last year we lost to Union. Um, they went on; they were the best team in the nation. They won the national championship. So, um, you know, over, over the summer um, we were just thinking that you know how it, how far are you off? You know, um, and that that was the question we we're kind of asking ourselves, and what you know what areas you need to improve in. Uh, what areas you need to address. But I thought the one thing is um, Union came out and they jumped us at, at the start of the game last year, uh, that second, that regional final. We felt like, uh, you know, we felt we, like we were a little slow at the start of that game and they came out and they, they just jumped us, you know. Um, and we were kind of on our heels that first period. We, we managed to get through it, but we were chasing the game after that point. So, um, I think going into the regional final this past year, it was something that we spoke about at breakfast, you know, just about that we don't want to be chasing the game, that we want to come out hard from the beginning. Um, and uh, and we did a better job. You know, we did a better job with that this year. So that would probably be the one thing. Okay, right here in front. Steve Vidak, Omaha World Herald, for all four of you. Just talk a little bit about what you've seen from Omaha on film and uh, – best things that they do around and what you need to neutralize to be successful tomorrow. Nate, why don't we start with you? Well, I think they uh, it starts in that. I think they have outstanding goaltending. Uh, they have a goaltender that led the country in save percentage. And that's, that's pretty that's pretty darn good because I think there's a lot of elite goaltenders in college hockey right now. Um, so, you know, first and foremost, I think that's their biggest strength. I think they got a lot of stick skill. I think their forwards are good in transition. Um, and I think if you know if, if you give their forwards time and space, they're going to find they're going to find the open man. They you know that they, they they're very good at doing that on the rush. Uh, they're good at doing it in the offensive zone. So um, I would say those are their strengths. No. Uh, yeah, Omaha's a great team, but um, we watched some film on them. Good offensively, and their their goalie likes to battle, and uh, but. We watch. We didn't watch too much film on them. We just want to focus on our game and uh, focus on what we need to do and uh, play hard, and we'll see the outcome after that. John. Yeah, I um, um, I, I played against Ryan Massa in the USHL, so obviously I have very high respect level for him and what he's been able to do there. Hey, he's an outstanding goalie, and um, it starts there. And I think I've had the pleasure of playing with Ian Brady as well. So I think their decor starts with him. He's a very mobile guy, and he likes to jump up in the rush as well. So I think, and then um, obviously on, on offense, we've seen some tape, and we know they're a very good top line. And then their their two through four get it done really with their depth. So uh, we know they're going to come at us in waves, and um, they're very skilled, as Coach said. And then as Noel said, we just have to be ready to play our game and not try to tailor ourselves too much to them. Just be ready to execute our game plan and uh, be ready to go. John mentioned uh, the USHL, all four of our likely starting goaltenders, of course, have a background in the United States Hockey League, which you probably all know is our top uh, junior hockey league in our country. And uh, some final thoughts with from uh, Ross. About? Uh, About Omaha. Omaha, okay. Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Um, I think, the, like you said, the, these guys have said uh, good six skill and stuff like that. I think the big thing for us is close time and space. Uh, the last two games we played, uh, that was a big thing coming in, is make sure that we're – we're not giving them time and space to make plays because they have some good players. So um, that's probably the big thing for us is to play our game and make sure we're closing space in the D zone. Uh, one other person I want to introduce, just so you all know, Kristen Fazbender, who is the director of this championship for the NCAA. Kristen, stand up so people can say hi. If you have questions for Kristen throughout, uh, she'll be here if you would like further questions. Okay, right here in the front row. Scott McLaughlin, WEI. Uh, 
John, after regionals, your coach talked a little bit about how he, there's been times he's been pretty tough on you in the past and, uh, you know, gotten on you for stuff because he expects so much of you. Uh, how do you handle that, you know, when you're either, you know, criticized or, you know, kind of, uh, you know, under the under scrutiny from your coach? Uh, I mean, the one thing, he, he's been hard on me, but it's always been one-on-one. -on -one. It hasn't been calling me out or anything like that. And uh, I think it, it's one of those things where, you may not understand at the time, but it's something you look back on a day later, or a week later, or something like that, and you really appreciate it, it for what it is, and because um, it helps you going forward. And uh, it's not always going to be smooth sailing. No one's perfect, and um, I mean, I've learned a lot from my mistakes, and definitely the mistakes that he's highlighted for me um, have helped me come a, a long way on and off the ice. And so, uh, as we might butt heads sometimes when it's actually happening, but. It's uh, it's been probably the biggest part of my development. Looking back on it, I, Coach Lehman, I know you want to probably comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's your job, you know. I mean, it's uh, it's it's it's. it's a t I think it's the toughest thing about college athletics. As soon as you let the guys know how much you like them and how much you really love them, um, things slip, and it's it's you have to have a relentless standard. Y your job is to get guys to. Um, to reach their potential, and um, there's a lot of love in the summer. You know, you can put your <laughs> arm around each other in the summer, but um, but we we try to confront that. You know, at our opening meeting, and, and just let the guys know that you know there's you're going to see the the face of our staff that's uh, that you know is sometimes uh, has their arm around you, and sometimes you're going to see this, the face of our staff that is pushing to another level, and that's our job. You know, and and we have to look ourselves in the mirror every night also and say. Um, I didn't let things slip, uh, you know, I, I helped that guy develop or I helped, you know, I, I did my job and we all have a job and that's the big thing is that everyone's got to be able to look in the mirror at the end of the day and say, yeah, you know, I did my job. Right here in front. Kevin Walsh, Comcast Sports and Coach and, and the players. Is there a little extra regional pride being a New England school and having the Frozen Four being held in New England? Yeah, I, I mean, it, it was great making the bus trip up. Um, we didn't need a movie, so that was good. Um, <laughs> it was, uh, you know, it, it was great. It's, uh, it's special that it's in Boston this year. I'm sure it's special for Boston University also. Um, we've heard ticket sales have, have gone really well. Um, and, you know, I think uh, having two New England schools, you know, in the championship when it is in Boston, I think it's just, it's awesome for hockey. It's awesome for our area. Um, and I think it's, it's uh, you know, hopefully we can, you know, get it in Boston on a regular occurrence then. No. Uh, yeah, I think it's going to be a real, a lot of fun. And uh, knowing that we're not that far away, knowing that uh, our fans can drive 45 minutes to the game and knowing that we'll have their support. I mean, it's going to be a lot of fun. John? Yeah, I think it's um, being – Obviously, right down the road, uh, our fans have been great from the beginning. Uh, fortunate enough to play in Providence there, and uh, the outcome, the turnout was amazing. And uh, I know that we'll, it will be a lot of Friar fans in the stands as well. So, a uh, big thank you to them, 100%. And uh, the New England part of it, I mean, I'm I'm from Maine as well, obviously. So, uh, it, when it, when something like this comes to New England, you you find college hockey fans that you didn't necessarily know even knew what college hockey was. So that part of it's pretty special as well. And uh, I'm really happy for our school that we're able to hear and represent um, Providence and the great state of Rhode and stuff like that. And hopefully we can make a run. What do you got? Anything on the end there, Ross? Sorry, or? just played, played pretty well there. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But, uh, no, we're just excited to be you know, here locally um, in, the, in the New England area, um, just have our fans there. and. Just great for our program too to be able to be close to home, and um, they can come watch. They can, they can, uh, you know, just be there to support us. I mean, this is a big, it's a big step for our program. Um, and the, the previous regional was was unbelievable having our you know, our students down there and having an alum down to come watch and people that have probably never even been to a game in in, in my four years and now they're they might be hooked for the next you know 20 years coming to games, but. Uh, um, it's just it's an awesome experience to be part of, and to be close to, to home for us is, is uh, great. Julie, and then Dan, and then we'll take one in the back and be done.
Julie Robenheimer, HockeyBuzz.com. Coach, I want to start with you, and if any of you guys want to pipe up as well, that'd be great. Um, but I'm more curious for people who aren't familiar with this program and, and what you guys do, what would you say to them? How would you describe your team, your identity, or your personality? Well, I, you know, we try to be competitors. You know, that's the biggest thing is we, we, uh, we practice hard. We don't apologize for it. Um, we, we, we focus on competing every day. We focus on being, uh, as Noel mentioned earlier and Ross mentioned earlier, is a, a, a group of guys within the locker room that can look across the locker room and play for one another, um, that care about one another. And, and we, you know, we want to be respected as well within our community. You know, good people around campus, uh, good students in the classroom. Uh, represent Providence College well because there are so many alumni in the New England area, and, and we realize that we're you know we're playing in front of these people a lot. So, um, you know, if, if I had to you know choose one word, I would I would say competitor. That's that's our identity. We want to be competitors all the time. All right, boys, Ross. Why don't we start with you on that one? Okay, thank you. Appreciate that. Yeah, you're welcome. Um, I, I think for us. Uh, Relentless is a, is a word I think I describe us with. Uh, just no matter what, we're gonna keep working. We're gonna keep battling uh, till the end of the till the end of the buzzer. Um, it's been a kind of up and down year, but we stuck through it. We're relentless through the times where stuff didn't go our way or uh, pucks didn't go in the net, and I think that's made us a better team now. Um, just uh, just gotta keep going. Just keep keep doing what we're doing. John, who keeps it loose? Who's the who's the clown of the bunch? Who keeps it loose? There's a few of those. Yeah. Uh, I really don't. I can't pick one. I don't have one to pick. So. No, I didn't mean it's to it's put it's you on the spot. It's a tie there, between sir. a few guys. Yeah. So, it wouldn't be fair to just give one guy the credit. All right, Noel, what do you got? For which question we want me to answer? <laughs> uh, your team, what it's all about? Um, I think we're a gritty team. Um, like Coach said, we like to battle, and uh, we're a team that can come from behind and s sneak up on you and take the win. But, um, yeah, we'll fight hard for 60 minutes, and and I think our results will show for that. Um, for a guy that's funny on the team, let's see here. Well, I don't know if I can pick, but the guy that tries the most to get – chuckle out of someone I'm gonna go with Mark Adams. He's <laughs> tries. <laughs> <laughs> He'll like that analysis, yeah, I'm yeah. quite sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Dan Rubin from US College Hockey Online. Guys, uh, you know, when we talk about the New England landscape, Massachusetts has obviously had a, its moment in the sun on the frozen four. Connecticut had it a couple years ago with, with Yale and Quinnipiac. Um, in terms of the state of Rhode Island, Division One hockey, you become kind of the, the standard bearer coming in here for the Ocean State. Uh, what's that like? Uh, what are things that, that, you know, when people now talk about college hockey that you like them to know about the state of Rhode Island and about the game coming out of uh, the state that, you know, is now fallen, that's no longer in between uh, Massachusetts and Connecticut. You guys are on center stage with Rhode Island here. John, start with you. Uh, I'm going to ship this one over to Noel because he's from there. <laughs> okay, ship. We lose um, all the power here. Check. Um, okay. <laughs> Speak so, out. Um, I think, as a team, I think we just need to focus on, like, getting here. It wasn't. We didn't just get here. We played it one game at a time, and as of right now, I mean, we're focused on Thursday night, and we're not done until 60 minutes. But I mean, we're focused on first shift, first five minutes. We like to take it one step at a time. We don't like to just say, like, we're here. It's like we worked hard to get here, but it's in the end, it's we got here one game at a time. Dan, is that good? That was Noel, by the way, yeah. uh, for those uh, listening back at AS AP Sports. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> okay. Well, being in Rhode Island, yep. Rhode Island pride. Rhode Island pride. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guess, uh, I mean, it's a small state, so you don't hear it too often, but it's good to get Providence back on the map. And 30 years, we're back to where we need to be. And hopefully, we can continue this journey. But, um, I mean, it's a good feeling getting probably like 
people like Ross and John had said about um, having the regional in Providence, having people come to the games that usually don't come. It's just a, it's good to have people in Rhode Island come out, see the games, see what Providence is all about, and what kind of team we are. And uh, might be a small state, but we're hard workers. Awesome. Last one in the back. Andy Merrick from the New England Hockey Journal. Nate, we talked about the, the local aspect and this being a, um, a New England Frozen Four. We always ask about the wow factor and whether players are ready for the big moment. Do you expect that maybe some of that is a little bit mitigated because this is a routine a little bit for you guys that you are, you know, you're familiar being here. You, you made the bus trip many times. And, and also for the players, does this feel like it's been a little bit more routine than maybe it would have been if this was in Pittsburgh or Philadelphia? We'd like to keep it routine, but you know we're not we're not uh, regularly in front of 50 media after every practice. <laughs> so um, there's definitely feels both of the regional last weekend and in coming into Boston here that it's it's a big moment. It's a frozen four. I mean, I think uh, you know I think the guys definitely realize that. I mean, all the media on the bench at practice and things like that. Those those aren't things that you know we're we're used to being around. So. Um, Indirectly, those things touch the guys. You know what we're. You know we want to try to focus on staying in our routine, and I think being you know traveling 50 minutes up the road to Boston helps us. You know, kind of make it maybe feel a little more like our routine. Um, you know, there's not a flight involved. Um, you know, we've we've played in this building before. That helps us a little bit. Um, so. You know, we're just we, we want to limit the we want to limit the distractions and try to just kind of stay in our routine. But uh, the guys know it's a frozen four. They know there's going to be big moments, and um, that's where competitors step up. You know, competitors play their best hockey in the big moments. Ross, you're at the frozen four. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's like Coach was saying, it's it's tough uh, when you get a police escort from the hotel to <laughs> <laughs> to the garden to kind of realize that it's uh, just another game. But uh, I think for us. Um, kind of being in some bigger games like this, uh, we know you know the the media and the and the off ice stuff that that comes with it. And I think uh, once we step on the ice tomorrow night, it'll be you know just another game for us. We've played in a lot of big games in the past, and I think uh, we're just excited for the opportunity um, and and just uh, making sure we leave it all out there. So John, did the bus back up the ramp? Were you on that bus? Oh yeah. Was it terrifying? No, no, he did a great job. He did. Evidently, this ramp, you have an inch on either side, and the ramp was built for elephants to come up, not necessarily buses is what the building people have told us. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm glad it worked out for you guys. Did it like a pro. Yeah. How's the Frozen Four treating you? It's going great. Yeah. It's, uh, I, think, I think it's pretty fun um, to be here and just realize how, uh, how fortunate we are to be here. It's uh, kind of hit. Um, I know my roommates and I talked about it a little bit at the beginning of practice or last Saturday, um, before practice on Saturday, about how I mean, we're w one of four teams left in the country still still practicing, and that's, uh, that's a pretty cool feat. That's a pretty cool accomplishment. But uh, when you get to this point, you really want to you wanna take it all the way. So we're happy to be here, and we're, we're proud to be here. But at the same time, that's not going to affect our work ethic or anything like that. We're going to attack the game tomorrow, and uh, we're definitely going to be ready to go and pushing to get to Saturday. And Noah, we're going to close this thing out with you. Yeah, it's, it's a lot of fun being here, but uh, at the end of the day, it's a business trip, and uh, having an older team will help because uh, we've been in these big games and knowing that there's there's a couple of young guys that will be in it, we'll be able to set them straight, but uh, it's been a lot of fun so far, and I mean, can't wait to, for tomorrow and see what's in store for tomorrow. <laughs> 507 face-off, guys. Thanks very much. Best of luck. Stay tuned. <laughs> Stay tuned. Mr. Robin told me to wish you the best of luck. Who is that? Dave Oldman. Oh, okay. Thank you. I do agree that. Appreciate it. Good work, boys. <laughs> Good job. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. One thirty. Uh, we will have the Omaha group here. One thirty.